Welcome to a lesson on scale factor. There are many real life situations where we compare similar objects. When we have two figures that are similar, we can think of them as scale drawings of one another. That means there is some scale factor from one figure to the other. What this means is there is a constant multiple from the first object to the second one. Let's look at an example. We are given the two rectangles are similar. We are asked to find the missing length, which is this length here. Because the two rectangles are similar, we should be able to analyze the lengths of corresponding sides to determine the scale factor, which will allow us to determine this missing length. Corresponding sides of similar polygons are sides that are in the same position. So looking at the small rectangle, this side corresponds to this side in the large rectangle, and this side in the small rectangle corresponds to this side in the large rectangle. Looking at the corresponding sides with length two and length six, because two times three is equal to six, three is the scale factor from the small rectangle to the large rectangle. Now let's go ahead and write this down. Again, the scale factor from the small rectangle to the large rectangle is equal to three. Well, knowing this will allow us to determine the length of this side here because it corresponds to this side with length four in the small rectangle. So because four times three is equal to 12, the length of the missing side here is 12 units and therefore x equals 12. More formally we say that the corresponding sides of similar polygons are proportional. Remember to form a proportion, we set two ratios equal to each other. Let's set up a proportion for these two similar rectangles. Using these two lengths in the small rectangle, let's write the ratio of these two sides as two to four. Notice how this is the ratio of the length of the shorter side to the length of the longer side. So again, the ratio is two to four. This must equal the ratio of the short length to the longer length in the larger rectangle. Well, the ratio of the shorter length to longer length for this rectangle would be six to x. Now looking at these two equal ratios, notice how two times three is equal to six, and therefore to create an equivalent ratio, we also multiply four by three, which does give us, again, x equals 12. Also notice how multiplying by three here indicates the scale factor is three, going from the small rectangle to the large rectangle. Let's look at some more examples. Given the similar triangles below, find the missing length. So the missing length is this length here. Notice how we have two overlapping right triangles that are similar. Let's begin by determining the corresponding sides. Notice how this leg in the large triangle corresponds to this leg in the small triangle, and this leg in the large triangle corresponds to this leg in the small triangle. Let's form a proportion by setting the ratios of the legs equal to each other. And let's write the ratio comparing the length of the short leg to the length of the long leg for both triangles. So looking at just the large triangle, the ratio of the lengths of the two legs would be eight to six plus six, which is 12, giving us a ratio of eight to 12. Again, this is the ratio of the short length to the long length. This is important because we need to set up the same ratio using the small triangle. So the ratio of the lengths of the two legs in the small triangle would be x to six, again comparing the length of the short leg to the length of the long leg. Now that we have a proportion, let's determine the value of x, which is the missing length. Looking at the known lengths of 12 and six, because 12 divided by two is equal to six, to create an equivalent ratio, we also must divide eight by two. Eight divided by two is equal to four, and now we know x equals four. So four is the missing length here. Let's also give the scale factor. The scale factor would be, will we multiply these lengths by to get the corresponding lengths in the smaller similar triangle. Dividing by two is equivalent to multiplying by one half, which means a scale factor from the large triangle to the small triangle is one half. And let's go ahead and write this down. Scale factor equals one half 
from the large triangle to the small triangle. Looking to the next question, a toy company wants to create a scale model of a sports car for the holiday season. The actual car is six feet wide by 12 feet long. The scale model is to be two inches wide. How long should the scale model be? To answer this question, we'll set up two ratios comparing the width to the length in the actual car to the scale model. We do have one issue here though. Notice how here the units are in feet and here the units are in inches. Let's convert six feet and 12 feet to inches. Well, we know one foot is equal to 12 inches and therefore six feet is equal to six times 12 inches which equals 72 inches. And 12 feet is equal to 12 times 12 inches which equals 144 inches. So for the first ratio, using the actual car, let's compare the width to the length, which would be 72 inches to 144 inches. And let's just write the ratio as 72 to 144. And now for the ratio of the scale model, the two inches is the width, and this is the ratio of width to length, and therefore the ratio is going to be two to the unknown length, which we'll call L. We know these two ratios must be equivalent, so let's determine how we go from 72 to two. Well, 72 divided by 36 is equal to two, and therefore to find the length, we divide 144 by 36. So now we know L is equal to 144 divided by 36, which is equal to four. And we know the units are in inches. So to answer the question, how long should the scale model be? The scale model should be four inches long. Let's also give the scale factor from the actual car to the model. Dividing by 36 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and therefore dividing by 36 is the same as multiplying by 136, which is a scale factor from the actual car to the model. And let's, so let's also record this. I do want to mention, if we left the units in feet, we could still determine the value of L based upon the ratio of six feet to 12 feet. However, however, if we don't convert to inches, we would not get the correct scale factor. I hope you found this helpful.